Martini from Mini Bull Design, and today I'm out in the shop puttering on this uh, third recumbent bike. Now it's really humid outside, and uh, the boys are out there working on the house, but I'm in here. It's a lot cooler in the shop here. But to get to the point, uh, I'm running short on material for videos, and I want to continue to make them, so uh, I've gotten some emails from people asking me about uh, some of the finer points of building the recumbent bike and uh, most of them seem to be focused on front end geometry. So uh, for you backpackers, I apologize for veering completely and totally off of backpack and into the recumbent bikes, but I enjoy them so much that uh, I'm going to make a few videos on recumbent bikes. And today, I'm going to uh, address front end geometry, which once you're shown is really not that complicated. Uh, there's four or five fairly simple things that you have to know to build one of these front ends. So let's set the camera up and I'll explain uh, the finer points of recumbent bike front wheel geometry. Okay, the first thing is called center point steering. And that's pretty darn simple. Uh, how you set that up is you take the, the center of where your tire touches the ground, which would be down here, right where the center of the, if you take the tread and find the very center of it, take that point, and this isn't super, super, super critical, but it's a good idea to get it as close as you can. And if you draw a line from that, right straight up, so it comes right through the center point of this pivot point, which is your kingpin or your whatever, whatever you want to call it. The line should go right straight down through this and go right down and come and stop right at the center of your tire. That's called center point steering. Uh, fairly easy to do. You just, uh, when you weld this bracket on, you make sure that this bracket is welded in at the correct angle so that it falls that way. So that's, that's one thing, center point steering. Okay, the second thing is caster. <clears throat> you see that this same kingpin we were talking about before is setting this way. Let me use a... It's not straight up and down. If it was straight up and down, it would steer extremely fast and, and be completely uncontrollable. It would jump all over the road, just be way too fast. So what you do is you set this at an angle like this. Uh, most of them are set at 10 degrees, and that is pretty acceptable. I'm experimenting with this one. I went to 12 degrees. Now, the thing with this is, the more of that angle that you have, the more of this angle that you put in, the more stable it would be, but the bigger the radius to turn. So as you cr crank this up, this robs you of uh, turning radius, makes the turning radius larger and larger. Uh, you know, if you take like a chopper that's raked right out like this, it takes a really big area to turn. So that's the second um, measurement. Okay, the third one is called Ackerman's Steering Principle, I believe. And what that addresses is when you're going down the road and you turn, the inside tire on the turn is going to be turning in a smaller circle than the outside tire. So this wheel needs to be turning sharper, this wheel needs to be turning sharper than the outside wheel. If they both turn equal, one of them is going to skid because it's not going to be matched to the radius it's turning. So Ackerman came up with a way to set it so that that would work perfectly for both wheels. They would turn at different uh, different angles automatically. And how that works is you take your rear wheel and find the center of it and take a line and run from that back up to this pin again and find the center of that. And that line will intersect your tie rod. And right where it intersects is where you want the pivot point of this. And you can adjust that by welding on longer or shorter tabs to intersect that line from the center of the rear tire directly up to this front kingpin. And that should intersect that line. And that, believe it or not, will adjust 
the radius turns on these two wheels and match them right up perfectly if you do it correctly. So that takes care of that. Okay. Okay, another angle is toe-in, which you probably already all know about, and that's fairly simple. When this is going down the road, if you measure from the center of this tire to the center of this tire, uh, front and back, the front should be towing in about 3.30 seconds or an eighth of an inch so that the, the tire is a little bit pigeon-toed inward and a little bit of the opposite on the back uh, to make it handle correctly. If you don't have your toe in set, it'll tend to jump back and forth across the road and wander all over the place and also skid the tires and rob you of a lot of uh, of your steering power, That I mean of your pedaling power. You don't want anything to drag and if the toe in isn't set correctly, it will create some drag and slow you down. So that takes care of that angle. Okay, let's just take a minute and look at construction in general. I'm going to say that this bike, when it's finished, uh, if I put a regular used Shimano shifter on it instead of the sternum archer hub, I probably could have built this bike for under $100 easily. Probably the only thing I can think of that I absolutely had to buy was this steel. And it was uh, that piece of steel that this bike is made out of was uh, like six bucks. The usually the biggest expense is the front axles, and these are made from pedal axles with just regular stock wheel hubs on them. And I had did a video a while back on that. I'm thinking of doing another video on it in more detail and showing exactly how to do it, so you don't have to buy these expensive front hubs. And if you're saying, well, yeah, but how long is that going to last? Well, I have pedaled bikes uh, over 500 miles using a set of these axles. And uh, I've had no problem with it whatsoever. They've been one of the few things on the bike that never gave me any trouble whatsoever. So I'd say that is a, a pretty fair piece of engineering to uh, save yourself a couple hundred dollars or at least a hundred dollars by using pedal axles. In fact, this whole thing, this is a pedal axle, and this is the end off of a three-piece crank arm from an English bike. This is the neck off of just a regular bike, almost any bike. So you can see, and this is just the uh, down tube off of a just a standard bike with just standard sprockets. Uh, there's really nothing here other than this piece of metal that didn't come off of an old junk bike. So this is very economical. This seat came off the dump. That's an old school seat. Uh, and I took some metal from the dump and built it. This is a adjustable seat down tube off of a bike with the adjustment on it. This whole thing is basically just a junk bicycle. And I've used the worst parts that I had to build this because I knew that when I got it built, I would be changing it. And I didn't, when you change things, you ruin parts and destroy them. You have to cut them up and everything. So I haven't used anything valuable on this bike so that if I did want to change it, it would be no big deal and I wouldn't be wasting any really good material. So I'm Tinny from Indie Bowl Design. Get out and hike, take a friend, enjoy riding your recumbent bike, and more important than anything, be careful. And have a really great day. Bye-bye.